Okay, thank you so much for coming. I'm Jennifer, I'm with Shoe Swap Food Action, and today I'd like to introduce Brent Cox. He is from Fro Frosty Hollow Mushrooms, and he's gonna be teaching us all a little bit about growing your own mushrooms. Thank you, Brent. Hey everybody, I'm just here to give you some basic info on the mushrooms. Um, it's kind of hard to do a course on how to grow your own mushrooms in a short period of time, but we can get started and uh, let you guys know what we can. Um, you know, especially with uh, the food security issues, uh, that's why we're here uh, in the world these days. Mushrooms are a great way to get a lot of nutrients and such that you get from meats, which are, you know, hard for us to produce these days with the amount of land it takes to uh, to, to raise cattle and such and food for our cattle. But uh, not that I don't eat meat because I do love meat, but uh, it's just another alternative source for nutrients and uh, easy food source, cheap food source that you can grow at home yourself. Um, so. You can get started at all different levels. Um, the hardest part about growing your mushrooms is the sterile environment and uh, having a sterile workplace to, to start off with your cultures. Um, so like when you're at home doing your own mushrooms on a small scale, generally you'd start with a still air box. So it's just like a, a clear tote that you have a couple holes in that you can put your hands in and uh, work with your cultures in there and your petri dishes, uh, your agar. Um, your grain, your sterilized grain spawn, um, get that going and doing your transfers into your substrate blocks um, easily and uh, cheaply at home. Um, like myself, I have a laboratory set up with flow hoods um, that I work in front of, so it's a lot easier, but that's not really economic, economical for a small scale grower at home. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips and ideas on growing your own mushrooms at home that are cost effective. Um, so first is what you're gonna need is to get a tote, really, and, and make a still air box out of it. Um, I was gonna bring one today, but I couldn't find one. I had one for a course I do in Armstrong, but I couldn't, uh, it must have gotten thrown out or something. Um, so I didn't have that, unfortunately. But uh, really, to grow your own mushrooms, you're gonna need a still air box. You're gonna need, um, you, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna pressure cooker, canner to, to sterilize your grain in. Um, and uh, that's about it. So, um, you can grow your mushrooms, like what I do is, I get these uh, unicorn bags, they're called. They're specifically made for growing mushrooms. And I use hardwood and soy hulls and I make what's called a master's mix. Um, so I'll, I'll, put, I'll make that in these bags and then they'll go into a sterilizer, they'll get sterilized. And then I'll take a grain spawn that's colonized and I'll put it in there, colonize these bags. And this is actually what the bags will grow out of. So once they're completely white like this one and completely colonized, they're, they're ready to start growing. This block here showcases a, a chestnut mushroom that's ready to harvest, um, grown out of these bags. So it's, uh, you can see pretty much uh, after everything's colonized, you make a small slit in the bag um, and then the mushrooms will grow out of there on the outside. And then once, once they're ready, you harvest them, um, you, you tape over that slot, and you can get multiple flushes out of this block. When it dries out, you can rehydrate it and get more. You can also take the substrate out of this block and you can use it to colonize more um, substrate of another kind whether it be hardwood or you can use straw to grow a lot of mushrooms on especially oyster mushrooms they'll pretty much grow on anything cardboard straw anything you want um, and you don't need these unicorn bags to grow your mushrooms um, a lot of people will use buckets like these um, they'll use straw you can use like a vinegar or a lime bath to to sterilize that straw pasteurize it i should say um, put it into the, the, the bucket and you put your grain in there in layers. Once it's colonized, you have holes that are drilled in this, in this bucket that you have taped over. And once it's all colonized inside, you take that tape off and the mushrooms will go right out of the, right out of the, um, the bucket. And with the bucket, it's more economical because you can reuse that bucket so many times, right? So, um, that's one way to do it. But, uh, yeah, so I start off when I grow my mushrooms, they, I, I start off uh, in agar. So it's, it's, just, uh, it's just like a gelatin that you'd use and you, you add nutrients to it. I use like a malt and a yeast um, solution that I put into the agar and I sterilize these. Uh, I sterilize the agar in the, in the pressure canner, pour it into these dishes in front of my flow hood or in your still air box, whatever you're using. And then you get the mycelium growing on here. And this is the way, this is how you clean your mycelium. Like if you were going into the wild and you found a mushroom that you wanted to grow at home, 
or if you're buying cultures off somebody else and you want to get them cleaned, which you need to do before you start going, because if you have any other bacteria or any other mildew or mold um, in here, it's gonna take over and you're not gonna have a clean culture. And when you go to put it into your substrate, the molds will take over, right? So you wanna give the mycelium the best chance possible to colonize. Um, so I use the agar the, in these Petri dishes to clean up my, my cultures. So I'll start like with, uh, you can take a clone off of a mushroom, you can put it right on the agar and it'll start growing, the mycelium will start growing out of it. And then you'll take a, a cut um, of the clean mycelium and you'll do transfers. And you'll have to do multiple transfers in order to get a clean culture. And then once you have that clean culture, you can take it and an economical way in your pressure counter if you're doing this at home, like I use for my commercial operation, I have bags I do my grain in, just like these substrate bags but you can use jars, right? So you, you hydrate your grain, you can use any grain. I use a whole oats because it's really cheap in our area. A lot of other people use like a rye berry or such, but it's generally more expensive in our area for that. So I go the cheapest way possible. I get the whole oats, I hydrate them, I sterilize them. And then once you have a clean culture, you can take the agar, you can cut it up, you can put it into your, your grain. And then once the grain is completely colonized like this, this is actually a little bit overdue. You can see the the orange liquid in here, that's metabolites. So that's when the mycelium's colonized all the grain, it starts feeding on itself, and then it'll start producing these metabolites in the jars or the bags. But you can take, then once you get that colonized in the jars, you can take that grain and you put it into your sterilized substrate, whether it be in the buckets. Um, and like I said, you can use straw, you can use hardwood, which I use, um, you can use Pretty much anything for oyster mushrooms. Some mushrooms need need the hardwood, but oyster mushrooms are one that'll pretty much grow in anything. Um, so, if you're doing a small scale at home, you can either like these bags. We sell them at the farmers markets to people, and you can just you know make your slices in the bags. You can grow right in your kitchen counter. Um, you can grow pretty much anywhere in your home, in your garage, in your backyard, as long as it's in the shade in the cooler months. You know, um, I have a room set up with with um ultrasonic misters and ventilation and everything so it's a little bit more easy to to monitor and control um but if you were growing mushrooms at home you know you, you'll get lots of mushrooms really fast and you can store them you can dehydrate them you can can them you can pickle them you can do all sorts of things with the mushrooms um but uh if you want to grow your own and you want to do more than just a block or two, you'd set up what's called a Martha tent or like a, you can get like a grow tent or you can just get a, a little Martha tent, which is pretty much like a little greenhouse with shelving in it. You can have right in your living room, um, anywhere really, and control your environment that way and just make it a little less work for you. Um, but mushrooms are full of nutrition. They're, they're full of health benefits. Um, the lion's mane that I grow, it's, it's really good for your cognitive health, depression, anxiety, nervous system, immune system. Um, we grow red reishi, which is really good for your cardiovascular health. It's good at balancing and regulating hormones, um, blood sugar levels, a lot of antioxidants and pro-oxidants, B vitamins. Um, and there's so many other mushrooms out there with so many health benefits and minerals and, and vitamins for you. Um, so it's a really good way to get a lot of nutrition and it's a really economical thing to do at home and grow your own mushrooms. I know a lot of people might not like their mushrooms, but I don't know many people that have tried the gourmet mushrooms as long as they're cooked correctly that don't like them, you know? It's like a lot of the problems with mushrooms is the texture for people, I find, so. Um, yeah. Um, it's hard to cram in a lot of info in here for you guys to grow your own at home. Um, I do have a bunch of cards on the table that you could take and and get a hold of me. Um, I do teach other courses as well, um, longer courses through Armstrong Parks and Rec um, on growing mushrooms. But uh, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a really cheap and economical way to get lots of nutrients. Does anybody have any questions? What sort of temperatures are you It depends on the mushrooms. Um, some mushrooms like cooler temperatures, some like warmer temperatures. So like a lot of the mushroom farms that like I grow all mine indoors in a controlled environment, but a lot of mushroom farmers will have like greenhouses set up outside and they'll have seasonal varieties that they grow. So in the early, in the spring, they'll have different varieties that they grow in the summer. And then in the fall, they'll trade, they'll exchange for different varieties in the fall and they just go through. But typically most mushrooms will grow anywhere between 65 degrees and 80 degrees. Most mushrooms that I grow anyways, I keep my room at 65 degrees. Can you tell us 
us more about the course in Armstrong? Yeah, it'll be, I, I believe it's later this month is the course in Armstrong. I don't have this specific date, um, but it's, uh, it's like a four hour course and we go more into detail in all the different techniques of growing your mushrooms, um, working in the still air box um, at home. And everybody that comes gets a, a grow bag to take home and, and grow their own. But uh, yeah, it's later this month. I'd look, if you're interested in it, you just go onto the Parks and Rec web, website for Armstrong and you can find all the information. Yes. Yeah, I, I haven't done that. There's a lot that you can do, and I do I do grow a, a mushroom that's called an elm oyster or a garden mushroom, and it, it'll grow, grow in the ground like that. And there's other mushrooms like the wine cat mushrooms um, that you can grow. I, I tell people when they when they're done with their blocks, they can break it up and throw it in their garden, um, just because the mycelium is really beneficial. Um, when you have mycelium growing in your ground, you have your plants will need less water. You won't have to water as often. They'll get more oxygen to the roots with the mycelium networks in the ground. Um, it's just a really healthy, like uh, these days, everyone's about the no-till, living soils. And one of the best things about that is having the mycelium growing in the ground. So even if it's a my mycelium that's not gonna grow, produce mushrooms out of your garden, it'll still grow the mycelium all through the ground and it'll, it'll help the health of your soils. So I, I personally have not done any in the gardens, but I've seen a lot of it. And I know for, like, there's some varieties that you can have grown in your garden. You'll be harvesting mushrooms and it'll benefit your plants also. So, yeah. So they'll just pop up when the conditions are right. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And do those overwinter as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I had a fellow that bought a block off me um, at the winter market in Kamloops and it didn't do anything for him. He threw it outside and then uh, they went away for the winter and they came back in the springtime and he started having a bunch of mushrooms growing outside. So cool. yeah, it definitely overwinters, yes. Okay. yes. I just find I have some in my, in my lawn. Yes. And I'm like, I'm freaked out and I don't know why. Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're flat and they look like the ones you eat, like the uh, white cat <laughs> or whatever. They're like the ones you get in the store. But like the button mushrooms. Yeah. Like the button yeah. Mushrooms, <laughs> yeah, there's there's apps and there's also groups on like social media like Facebook that will help you identify your mushrooms. Um, typically, if they're growing in your in in your um, yard, more than likely, like out of your grass, they're not going to be an edible mushroom. Like we have, uh, they they actually call it a lawn mushroom. I think there's a mushroom that's really prevalent in BC and uh, grows everywhere in grasses, but it's not really an edible mushroom. Um, but yeah, if you're not sure about it, you definitely want some help identifying it before you eat it because there's. There's lots of mushrooms or toadstools, toadstools they call them out there that are poisonous and non non edible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, is there truth in the idea that when you have a mushroom that has more like gills versus spores, is there truth in gill or having like non toxic? No, there there there's lots of mushrooms that that have gills that that are definitely um, toxic. Um, and there's, there's mushrooms that don't have gills that are edible, so that's not really... A, a lot of the time, like mushrooms that are edible will have a white spore, where, where a lot of the poisonous mushrooms have like a purple or a, or a black spore, but again, that's not all the case, because these chestnut mushrooms that I have here today, they have a dark spore, and they're, they're very edible. Yeah, they're very tasty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes? I just want to be clear about the still box. So if you're doing yes. this bag method, you don't need the, the box. Well, you, you, you still would. So, like, I work in front of laminar flow hoods, which are like HEPA filters, like um, hospital-grade filters, and I work in front of them so there's a constant air, clean air blowing over my work area so I don't have any, um, anything settling down, right? So if you're, if you're working in the bags or in the jars or anything, you're going to want to be in front of a flow hood or inside a still air box just because you can have that, like a still air box is just going to be like a tote with the holes, but you can sterilize everything in there, sterilize all your stuff in there, and there's way less chance of anything, because there's mold spores everywhere, right? So way less chance of anything falling into your work area. I think I just mean if you're just doing that bag for the first time. Oh, okay, yes. Like if you bought the bag, yeah. if, the, if the bags, yeah, yeah, if it's already colonized like this, all of the, all the sterile work's done, okay. and you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, this, it's, it's, when you're actually fruiting the mushrooms out, it's not a sterile practice at all. You can, you know, you can do it in your garage. Because like the, they 
taken over already. Yeah, so. everything's called, you might get a little bit of like the shiitakes that I grow, you have to take the, the block right out of the bag. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of trichodermia growing on there, but it's just a surface mold. It's not going to, like everything's colonized already, all, all the substrate, so it's not going to harm anything, right? So, gotcha. But if it's, if, if it's not completely colonized, then that mold or bacteria or whatever it is can get in there and it'll, it'll ruin your blocks, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's kind of the advanced practice. The beginner yeah. is just having the bag. Yeah, typically, usually someone that's interested in growing mushrooms and the way they start is they go to like somebody like me at a farmer's market and they buy these bags that are ready to grow and you can put it in your kitchen and grow it. And, and then you get your hands in it, you know, and get involved in growing the mushrooms. And then you might want to learn a little bit more and experiment a little deeper. And, and if you're interested in growing them, uh, yeah, you'll want to get a little flow hood and uh, cool. make things just a little bit more... Because if you ha if you have a proper work environment, you're gonna have less waste, right? And you know, you don't. That's what you don't want, right? So yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have a red reishi that we grow and we provide kits for. And and the red reishi is actually a really easy one because it's probably the easiest kit you can buy and grow. It's not an edible mushroom. It's more just for the medicinal properties because it's really woody. But the reishi, you just leave it in the bag and it'll start growing on the top. You leave the bag completely sealed and it'll grow in there. And, and once the antlers get towards the top of the bag is when you open it. And then you wait for it to start having like a brown powder on it. And that's the spores. And once it starts to produce some spores, that's when it has the most um, benefits, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I, I just kind of open the bags. I, I just kind of rip the antlers off, and then I'll seal the bags back up, and I'll go for another, the next flush because you can get multiple flushes. Yeah. Hundred percent. When I have customers that come back and buy reishi constantly off me the dried, I try, I try to tell them take a reishi bag because you know it's thirty dollars. You're gonna get like two hundred dollars worth of product out of it, right? Like if you were buying it from me, already ready to go. Yeah. 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 And, and which one's the best to grow just for deliciousness and ease? Well, I always tell people like the easiest ones to start with um, would be like a blue oyster because they're really aggressive or the lion's mane because the lion's mane, again, it is another easy one to grow and it's really aggressive. It takes a little bit longer than the oysters. The, the oysters, you know, once they start to pin, they'll be ready in like five to seven days. Like it's really fast. Whereas the lion's mane will be a couple weeks at least, right? So... But yeah, I, I always tell people if it's their first block to either take a blue oyster or a lion's mane. Yeah. 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 How, yeah, many, I, how many varieties do you have? Um, well, we, we have elm oysters, blue oysters, golden oysters, black pearl oysters, king trumpet oysters, chestnut mushrooms, red reishi, turkey tail, lion's mane, cordyceps, and shiitake. Yeah. So quite a few. Yeah. Is there any other questions? <laughs> They're kind of like yeah. pets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they do take a lot. Like people ask always like, oh, can I buy it now? Do I have to be, like you have to be there every day. You're gonna have to spray it in the morning, spray it at night, unless you have a Martha tent or something set up, right? So yeah, yeah. What is the difference if you have the tent set up like you were saying? Like then what is the maintenance? Well, so if you have a tent set up, then you can have like a, a, like a humidifier or an ultrasonic um, mist maker uh, and ventilation set up on timers so that, that it's keeping everything at the right humidity and it has air exchange um, every 10 minutes or so. So you get rid of the CO2 and get fresh air in there. Um, it's just uh, a lot easier. So you don't really have to do anything. You, you put your blocks in there, you cut the holes, you let them sit and they'll just grow. Yeah. So really, very little maintenance at all. You just have to be there to harvest them when they're mature. Yeah. So you got to look at them every day because they grow pretty fast, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. I was in my teens. I worked for a guy that had a mushroom house. Okay. Okay. And what he used was uh, horse manure and I think it was a 
Okay. Yeah, so all the mushrooms that I grow, the gourmet mushrooms, they're all wood lovers. Whereas like portobellas and buttons and the, like the psychedelic type mushrooms, they all like manure, right? Um, so it depends on the mushroom varieties that you're growing, but all the ones that I grow are all wood loving mushrooms. Yeah. Another thing is, uh, uh, I used to pick a lot of boxwood. And on the line where the spruce starts, okay. and on the, like the highway, the, uh, there's very colorful mushrooms grow. Okay. Walk this thing around. Yep. Yes. Orange is red. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Is, did you see these colors before or after you ate them? I never tried them. They look like the Bolivis variety to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too. I'm not too versed at, at the foraging of the mushrooms. All I foraged for is after the fires here in '98. I did like the morels and that yeah. right when I was a teenager. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, there's so many different mushrooms out there. We're actually lucky in BC. We have lots of great mushrooms out there you can go and forage for, like pines and chanterelles and lobsters. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we work for Leo Gallagher. And uh, he wouldn't tell us what much of mushrooms look like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've seen them growing all over the place. Like, yes, they do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you give the mushrooms the right environment. Like, there's spores everywhere, right? So, well, yeah. So they'll, they'll take off when they have the right uh, conditions, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where can we get your mushroom stuff? Um, well, we're at the Salmon Arm Farmer's Market. Um, Alana, my partner, she's, she's there every Saturday. And uh, yeah, other farmer's markets, we do uh, the Camus Farmer's Market. We were doing the Armstrong one. Um, I have cards over there. Um, you can get a hold of me through uh, either phone or social media, email, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just 20 minutes out of town here, so we're, we're really local, and yeah, we're happy to, to help uh, teach people how to grow some mushrooms and uh, supply them with what they need to, to get started. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, all right, thank you guys. Thanks for coming.